Connor Paschke. Um, I'm a New York State Falconer. This is my red-tailed hawk, Vladimir. Um, it's for Vladimir the Impaler because I'm hoping he catches a lot of game this season. You know, he was born this year. That's legally. That's all I can trap. The hawks that are born this year. Um, and I could only have had an American Kestrel or a red-tailed hawk. I went with a red-tailed hawk. Uh, I go through the training process with him every day. Uh, I, you know, I fly him. I give him food. I feed him. Take care of him. Make sure you know all of his feathers are good. Make sure he's taking care of himself also. Um, if any problems arise, you know, then it's on me to take care of him. Really, I got into it because I saw I saw it on movies. I never really, never really thought it was feasible until I really went online, started researching it. Um, I have uh, a sponsor who was one of the first New York State Falconers, uh, Zach Bristol from Governor. Uh, you know he's he's helped me a lot and he's been really generous to take me on as a, as an apprentice this year. Really, with falconry, you can read as much as you want in the books, but when it comes to it, when it comes down to it, it's all about experience and learning from each different bird. Um, you know, problems arise, you know, on a daily basis, and you just got to deal with it and make sure your bird's healthy at all times. Pretty cool. <laughs> so, what's he eat? Um, right now, he's eating a squirrel, a gray squirrel leg. Um, I try to feed him wild game as much as I can, just because, I mean, that's what he's eating in the wild. Um, just because a squirrel is so big, he, he gets about four meals out of a squirrel, so that's about four days worth. I have to also feed him the innards and everything. They eat all of that, that's where they get all their vitamins. Um, I also have fed him shrews, pigeons, rats. Um, I can feed him mice, quail, chickens. Um, as long as it's a full prey item, I can feed him that. Is there sort of rules to how long you'll have him for? Or? Um, as far as I can have him until the day he dies, which the lifespan is about 25 to 30 years in captivity. As it goes in falconry, I won't have him for that long. Um, after a few years, you know, he's done his part and I've done mine. Um, I'll let him go and he'll be a wild bird again. You know, at that point he'll be at maturity, he'll be a strong bird. Um, I'll make sure that he leaves in a reasonable time and he leaves on a full stomach so he can go a few days without eating so he can get readjusted back to the wild. I'll let him go and then I'll get a different bird, either the same species or a completely different one. So it's something you plan on doing for, it's a hobby that you could have for a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's really a lifetime hobby and once you get into it, there's no getting out of it. It's kind of, you know, I mean you can, you can stop and everything but it's always with you and you always kind of crave that uh, falconry season in the fall. You know, when the birds are, you know, at their peak, because in the summer they go through molt and, you know, you can't really fly them. Um, but, you know, in the fall you're just itching for every fall, just like deer season or waterfowl season, you really itch for it. Um, and once you get kind of, you know, a small experience with a raptor and you get up, the, up this up and close and everything, it's just something really unique and not a lot of people get to do it.